You have redeemed us, Lord, by your blood from every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us into a kingdom, priests for our God. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we come to the end of this fourth week of Easter, we continuously celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. But for the times where we may have fall or fallen and for our faults, let us ask God for forgiveness. So let us open up our hearts to the love and mercy he will bestow upon us. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us gather all of our prayers together into one. O God, author of our freedom and our salvation, listen to the voice of our pleading and grant that those you have redeemed by the shedding of your Son's blood may have life through you and under your protection rejoice for every unharmed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul came to Antioch in Pisidia, he said in the synagogue, My brothers, children of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing, to us this word of salvation has been sent. The inhabitants of Jerusalem and their leaders failed to recognize him, and by condemning him they fulfilled the oracles of the prophets that are read Sabbath after Sabbath. For even though they found no grounds for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him put to death. And when they had accomplished all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and placed him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he appeared to those who had come up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. These are now his witnesses before the people. We ourselves are proclaiming the good news to you, that what God promised our fathers, he has brought to fulfillment for us, their children, by raising up Jesus, as it is written in the second psalm. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. I myself have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. You, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for an inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall rule them with an iron rod. You shall shatter them like an earthen dish. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. And now, O kings, give heed. Take warning, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice before him with trembling rejoice. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, 
You know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, today we are reminded that God's love for us is the one thing in our life that is certain. That is our focus. God's love for us is the one thing in this life that is certain. We believe that God became human, that he died and rose again. And why? For all of us. Now comprehending this, comprehending his love for us, is humbling. And even the people in Jesus' time struggled to fully understand the truth of Jesus. And this is what we hear in today's gospel. Jesus knows that his disciples' hearts are filled with worry and anxiety and fear. It's the unknowing. They do not know about the resurrection experiences. They cannot predict Pentecost like you and I. And so he tries to comfort them. He reminds them that they do know the way. They know the way because they have been following Jesus for three short years. Brothers and sisters, this message of hope is for all of us because we know the way as well. If you and I stay close to Jesus Christ, especially during this time above all, then we know God's love. None of us can predict what the future may be, but we know that God is in charge of the future, and that should be reassuring enough. I remind us always that Jesus is the light that came into a darkened world, and he has come into our world once again, and he will continue to come into our world in the moments of darkness. That is why it is important for you and I to practice our faith and be faithful to the faith, so that in times of darkness we are assured of God's great love. We are in the midst of Easter, and the great Easter promise does not in any way bypass suffering, nor does it bypass death. The great Easter promise is that even in the times of terror and fear, in the times of darkness and night, even when it seems like we are drowning in our own grief, or we are overwhelmed with extreme fear of the unknown, Jesus takes each of us by our hands and shows us the way to the new and abundant life that he promises us. In the moments of darkness, we are reminded that Jesus is here with us and we have nothing to fear. If we allow fear to overcome us, then is Jesus really in our hearts? My brothers and sisters, as we come closer to Pentecost and as we continue to celebrate the joys of Easter, let us be reminded that Jesus is present among us. Let us continue to have faith in God's plan that God is watching over us, that the sacraments that have been given to us, which we will celebrate again at some point, are the signs of his love. God doesn't desert us. He is right with us. So in this moment, if you feel discouraged, if you feel grief, if you are confused or troubled, if it seems to be night all the time, Cast out those fears, because Jesus tells us today in the gospel, we know the way. He is the life and the truth. All we need to do is to trust in him. We lift our needs to our Heavenly Father, trusting that he will hear us. For Pope Francis, 
Bishop Scharpenberger, Father of Aqua, and for all who lead in the church. May the Lord grant them strength in guiding the church toward healing and sacramental transformation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For President Trump, for Governor Cuomo, and for the leaders of nations, may God give them courage and strength in seeking out justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those struggling with depression, anxiety, or any other mental health challenge, especially during these trying times, may God's healing hand provide peace and recovery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Mary's parishioners, as well as for the local community outside of these walls, may the grace of the Holy Spirit empower us to live the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died this day, as well as all of those who will die, and all of those who are in purgatory but have nobody to pray for them, may they rest in eternal peace with all the saints and angels in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. To the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we offer this sacrifice of the Holy Mass on behalf of all the seminarians of the Diocese of Albany, especially Nathan, who is with us this summer, especially for those who are preparing for ordination this coming September. We pray for an increase of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, and we continue to pray for all of our deacons and their service to our church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer these prayers to you, God of mercy, with thanksgiving and praise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care, they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirits. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But at this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never comes, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and even pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever, therefore overcome with paschal joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers and the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember all of our brothers and sisters from this parish who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirits. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ can be safely turned. And the body of Christ can be safely turned. Let us now make our spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Christ our Lord was handed over for our transgressions and was raised again for our justification. Alleluia. With the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel, let us pray for peace in our hearts, peace within our families, 
and the protection against Satan and evil in our nation. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.